Good morning, Floss Tube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Beth Ann, and this is Stitching by Twilight. And this is Floss Tube number two. Today is March 12th, 2020. And we have some whips to talk about. We have some haul to talk about. We have plans, uh, some shout outs. Um, what floss tubes I've watched um, a little bit about um, some of the challenges um, that I've been in and done and we'll just play it by ear okay let's get started um, I hope you have had a great month almost since we last visited and um, I hope that everybody is um, faring well with the coronavirus thing that's happening. Uh, it's kind of dicey. It's a little scary at times. It's, you don't know what's gonna happen next right now. So uh, just a random public service announcement. Wash your hands, people, a lot. Wash your hands. Soap and water is your best friend. And step away from the TP. Seriously. No. Leave some for somebody else. Just a little word on that one. We were having quite a uh, rowdy night the last couple of nights on Virtual Stitchers discussing the um, run on toilet paper that's been happening. And uh, yeah, we, it, if you can't laugh, then I don't know. You got to find humor where you can find it right now. And uh, we'll take it as it goes. So um, just a quick be safe, monitor your environment, just uh, be safe. That's the most important thing. Okay, whips. What have I worked on this week? Well, not so much this week, but basically since the last time we spoke, I've only worked on um, four projects. And one of them has gotten quite a lot of um, progress, shall we say. Um, and I, why don't we just start with that one and get it out of the way? Um, I've used it for quite a bit of the challenges, weekly and monthly. Um, I still got quite a few monthly challenges um, in daily 30, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And um, I've still got some more monthly challenges to work out for Magical Stitches, but I've still got the rest of the month and I wanna try to double dip where I can. So I'm waiting for new daily 30 challenges that are coming out tomorrow. Um, we get back to normal tomorrow. It's so weird when you're routine gets a little hiccup in it. Um, Cheryl McKinney, who runs um, Daily 30, she's Tranquil Stitches on um, Floss Tube. She was at market last week. So normally we get challenges on Fridays. We get our week on Friday and they run for two weeks. And then the next Friday we get another one runs for two weeks. And we didn't get any challenges last week. And I wasn't the only person that sat and thought that it just, one, it didn't feel like a Friday. Two, it felt like we were so missing something important because, you know, Friday morning, challenges get posted and then you sit and you plan and you figure out how you're going to work it. Sometimes the plans get changed, but nine times out of 10, you're pretty locked into your challenges. And it just, it felt so weird. Um, 
but we finally get back to normal tomorrow, so yay. <laughs> and um, we'll start with this one. I've used this quite a bit for the last weekly challenge that we got from Daily 30, which I'm going to mention is a closed group. Um, you can't get in. There's no waiting list. Um, if that changes, like I've said before, believe me, a lot of us on FlossTube will let you know because a lot of us are in in the groups. We're all in a lot of the, the same um, groups. And um, our last weekly one before she took the week off for market, and oh, we'll talk about market at the end because oh lord, there was a surprise for market. And what a beautiful surprise it was. And was Gilligan's Island week. And I managed to get every single prompt for that. There were six um, using Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. And because of that, I finished block two. I don't have, it's already been moved and I'm into block three now. Um, like I said, I don't know how to edit, um, but I think I have a picture of what the finished block of block two was. And that was my finish, my block two finish. I still have to go back and put the back stitching on the windows, but honestly, I kind of like it without the back stitch on the windows. I, I think I might just leave it and not even worry about the back stitch. But this is block two, and I finished this last Thursday or Friday. I finished it. I finished it either on the fifth or the sixth. Because I know I know by Sunday I was working on the third block. So um, sorry for the glare. I'm trying out hopefully the lighting is gonna be a little bit better. It's kind of a dingy cloudy day out so I have a light behind my computer so hopefully that will work and make things a little brighter and make things pop a little bit um, but that's block two and that's finished and I was able to um, like I said use Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow for all of Gilligan's Island week um, they were they were very high stitch counts this time. They were 400, 500, and 600. And penalty stitches were 200 stitches added to it. So I only had to do penalty stitches on one because I do have something with a bunny, but I'm not, I don't want to work on that. So I just decided to take the penalty stitches. So I had to do 800 for that. But six prompts, five were 600 stitches and one was 800 stitches. So it's a lot of stitches in one project and I've got them all in one project and we had these are what they were we had to stitch on a whip that wasn't a planned purchase but you found by scrolling um, at your LNS or online and this wasn't a planned purchase um, but everybody I had seen do Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow and then I'm like okay I like that it looks really good. Who was the designer? I went and scrolled into the designers. And I found this one. And, you know, my love of Victorian and Christmas and Charles Dickens. I fell in love with it. So I put it in my wish list on 123Stitch. My niece, in Christmas of 2017, bought it for me for Christmas. I had planned on buying it at some point. So not a planned purchase. Um, that was 600 stitches. Um, put some stitches into a piece that has letters. Lots of letters in this between the Christmas Carol and the alphabet. Um, stitch on a piece that has a flag. A flag. So Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. There's all the letters. You can see all the letters. There's letters. The flag. There's flag on the ship. 
stitch on a piece that has a body of water. This one has two. It has the ocean that the ship is on, but also um, the pond that the skaters are on. And that's actually what I used. And I said, um, it's a frozen body of water. And then stitch on a piece that has something round and completely filled in like a coconut. And that is the little apples in the bowl here. They're perfectly round. And then the one with the penalty stitches was stitch on something with a bunny. So I just went and did the penalty stitches. But this is Christmas at Huffman Hollow. You all know it. You all love it. I'm addicted to it. And this is where we are on block three. The pairs are done. The block is done. I will go back in again and follow like I did. I've done now with below and beside every block, but this is the last block on the row, so there won't be any beside this one. But I am going to go and just, you know, follow the line here and then just go down like four or five stitches um, just to define my block and help with the counting. I love this chart, but those blocks are a bear. I found out yesterday when I was stitching um, the leaves over here at the edge, edge of the block. This leaf here is supposed to meet up right, but right up against the edge of the block. Well, I had it done it right. I, my, all my counting was fine. This block this line for this block was one stitch over. So I had to frog all of this yesterday and restitch it so it was back to normal. I probably could have left it and it would have been fine because it's not, you know, it would have been, but it would have driven me crazy and yeah, it would have, I had to frog it. So that's uh, Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. It is stitched on 28 count mushroom Lugana by Zweigart and it's all DMC and I love the pears I think the pears are just the colors and the shading and shadowing on it that's just just DMC and that's where we are on that one I'm gonna keep that there because I need that but we'll just move that over there and get it out of my way okay second was and this falls into the monthlies um, for Daily 30 and Magical Stitches. Um, she makes themes every month for the monthlies. And this month was the Nashville Needlework Market. And again, Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. I'm not going to show it to you again, but I can show it to you on the picture. That's why I kept the picture out. Is, um... 500 stitches each and it's all about building your own room or booth or uh, display space in Nashville and about the friendships and everything that happens in Nashville. So prompt one for that and I still have quite a bit like I said left to do on this. I've only done I think two prompts and I'm working on a third today, which I'll have knocked out later tonight, um, is choose your location by stitching on a piece with a building large enough to be a hotel. Um, block two. <laughs> that was finished. If that does not look like a hotel, or as I've been calling it, the grade two listed mansion, according to the bucket woman. If anybody has ever seen Keeping Up Appearances, you'll know what I'm talking about. Great, great British comedy from the 90s. Just, if you haven't checked it out, it's a it's on BritBox. Or I'm sure you can find clips and stuff with it on YouTube. You will howl. She is a cracker. And, I mean, Patricia Rutledge, she plays Hyacinth. And it's just hysterical. It's one of my favorite shows. Um, so, that was my building. Um, and then provide your vendors with what they need by stitching on a piece you would consider furniture. This is kind of tough. I was originally going to go with the trees in the forest 
because there's lots of there's a tree here and there's like part of a tree here and there's a christmas tree over here because trees are wood and wood makes furniture but it actually has to be i guess a specific piece of furniture and you know because i'm so literal you have to do it so where the skaters are in block in this block right here block six there's a sleigh sleigh beds were originally made from sleds sleighs that that's where the name comes from that's where the shape comes from it's front and back of the sleigh that's how they did it so that's my piece of furniture and i even put because i'm so literal i even put a link to the history of the sleigh bed where they actually make them from sleighs so um yeah that's fun uh and it says provide your buyers with a floor plan by stitching on a whip that has a square border 12 we're set with that one um, display your most modern piece by stitching on a whip with your most recent release date. And I'm going to save that for last because that was my new start for the 29th of, uh, February. Um, and then stitch on a piece that you feel you have enough experience that you could teach a class on it. And I picked something on Ada because I'm still... I'm enjoying stitching on um, even weave, loving it. A lot of the stuff that I'm starting now, it's all going to be on even weave. Only a few things I'm planning on starting are going to be on Ada. Um, but I feel more confident if I was to teach a class, it would be something that would be taught using Ada, <laughs> just because the county has all the rules. But for that, I picked Village Quaker by Darden Prevay. And I had 500 stitches, 510 stitches all total on this. And from when you saw it last time, I got um, the flower pot, the flower, the stems, the leaves over here. I got this flower down here done, the X, the Q, and then I just started on this flower pot here. And then I got the O and the R letter done and then the rest of the, the border here. Um, basically above this O and R, the top of this should come, I'm probably still going to have to move it, but the top should come of the chart should be right, right there, maybe a little lower, give or take, but that should be, um, that should be the top of the chart, but I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go this way now. I'm going to move into this area. I will finish this flower, even though it goes into the page above here, um, but yeah, when I continue on with this, if I need it for a challenge, I will just go straight across this way. Um, this is stitched on 18 count antique white Ada. And all the call for DMC. The only change that I made, like I said before, are these blues here. The, this dark blue right here is 930, 930. And then this lighter blue right here is 932. I had them left over from Cat Lovers by Jardin Privé. And um, I felt, you know, why not use them? Fit them in somewhere. And I've scattered them in and about around. And I like how it looks. It looks really, really good. I'm, I'm really happy with it. And um, it, was, it was a happy accident. And then the next one we worked on, which I still have to do for a couple of challenges, is um, that I worked on one of my finished ones for um, Nashville Market. And then we'll be pretty much done with challenges, except for a couple for Magical Stitches. And then, like I said, the one that was my new start. And is basically stitch on a whip that you feel would signify the special friendships by attending your market. I picked Autumn Dream by Cottage Garden Samplings, Songbird number 11, because I joined Virtual Stitchers in on October 2nd. My birthday is October 19th. This was my birthday present. The chart was a present from a dear friend. 
and I started it the afternoon on virtual stitches with a whole bunch of people sitting there while I started it. And virtual stitchers has become my, it's my home. It's, I can't, it's hard to stitch now without company, without having people stitching with you. And I like that. So this is, I've moved it to a bigger Q snap because I can get more done. And I don't have to move it so often. But when you last saw this, I was just starting to get to the top of the top of the wreath here. Whoops, here, right here. The top of the wreath right here. So I'm working and still in this area and I've kind of moved a little down this way. All that's left on this is the rest of, here we go, the rest of this section here, all the buds and the berries and stuff. This oak leaf right down here, and then this leaf up in the corner, this little tiny leaf right here, and then the word, and it will be done. And I'm hoping to have it done by Mania because my next one is in Hall. And it's, I think I've got Mania figured out. I'm still gonna do a little tweaking to it, but I think I am gonna do Mania, but it's gonna be done totally different than 31 new starts or 20 new starts. I'm only gonna have three new starts but we'll talk more about that a little bit at the end of the video and then when I get it finalized and figured out I'll make a these are my mania plans video but don't set them in stone because they could change who knows struggle is real so this is where we are on autumn dream bigger Q snap harder to get into the frame we'll have to play so I've finished I only had this bud, these two buds, I think, done. So I've worked all in here, all down here, all here. And then I'm getting to start to fill in this one now. Um, but I should be able to get the majority of this whole section here done sitting in this Q-snap area. And then I'll put it in the 11 by 11 Q-snap to get the other oak leaf down here that's below here and then I might be able to get the leaf that's over here but I'm not sure simply because it's with in my Lowry it it's kind of awkward because it's big I can get here and here in my Lowry but this side it's kind of tight because the clamp I clamp on this side where my hand is tight right here so we'll have to play around and um, and see with that but that is um, autumn dream I love it I cannot wait to start the second one it's all DMC it's done on 28 count mushroom Lugana and um, the only exception is the pumpkin house which you can't see because it's covered up but and it's also in the berries it's also in like the orange that you see in the berries and stuff is a Victorian motto. It's, um, is it in here? Yeah, it is in here. It's doesn't have a ton of variegation in it, but I don't know if you can, if you can see it. Yeah, it, it has just enough variegation that it gives a little bit of, um, a little bit of dimension because you got a little bit of dark spots and everything and it's um, I said it was marigolds and carrots I was half right it's orange marigold I tried at least I got it half right okay we'll put that one over there and then my next one was display your most modern piece by stitching on your whip with the most recent release date and that is the beautiful charity chart from Hands Across the Sea, Nicola Parkman, uh, Jane Marshall, 1857. As far as I know, because um, I sent the link to a friend the other day, it's still available. But I did go back and watch Nicola's video again. And she said it is going probably to be gone in the next week or two, maybe. 
So if you really, really want this, I will post the link to the chart below from the Hands Across the Sea website. Uh, it's a great cause. Great, great cause. Um, they're finally getting a handle on Australia and the fires. And thankfully, thank heavens. But anywhere that you can still make a donation, anywhere you can do something, still do it because they've still got a long road ahead of them. But this is the beauty that is Jane Marshall, 1857. H10, 1857. It's, I stitched on this. I started this, like I said, for the Virtual Stitchers Leap Year Start on February 29th. I wasn't planning on anything, but like I said in my whip parade video, if I was going to do a new start, it would be this one, and it was this one. I started this, and I just worked on it all day. I got, I think it was almost 900 stitches down. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop stitching it. It's just so beautiful. It's so lovely. I started at the bottom, so I'm in the the um, kind of tapestry motif part of it. And it's going to be a quick chart once I get past this section with the vines and the rosebuds because the rest of it is just straight lines and letters. And letters go fast. Anybody that knows to stitch letters, they go quick. So it, this this will be a finish, hopefully, soon. Because I'm using it right now whenever a challenge dictates. Because if I started it, I would just not want to stitch on it until it was finished. So I kind of like rationing it, if you call that, if you want to use that phrase. Or um, limiting myself to when I need it for challenges because I want to... I want it to last. I want to enjoy it. I just don't want to fly through it and miss it because I don't start my next Hands Across the Sea until April, but we'll talk about that when we're done. So it's just gorgeous. And the colors are so bright and 10-year-old colors, 10-year-old girl colors. They're just beautiful and perfect. And... Like I said, I just, I worked on this that entire day. I didn't even touch Christmas at Hawthorne Hollow. What is wrong with me? Yes, I know. I must love it if I'm, I was attached to it for that whole day. But this is where I got all day. I did have to frog one motif, which was right here. I miscounted, so I'm going to wait until I finish and pretty much, if I counted right, I only have like four or five stitches on this line and then goes up. And that's that's the whole width of the chart. In Nicola's video, when she talked about this, she held up her, the one that she stitched. And I forget what count she said she stitched it on. But when she held up the frame, it was like this big with the thing and she held up her hand in the video and it was just this, the, the stitched portion of where the frame the finished object was as big as her hand I was like no mine's gonna be about three hands two and a half maybe yeah it's not gonna be that small um, when I was looking at the hands across the sea that I want to do and I saw the different counts and because the, the great thing about the website in the where they have it they have so many counts that you can just decide upon and i'm reading the counts and it goes from 28 to 56. i swear it felt like somebody was sticking needles in my eye when i was reading 56 count i'm like never in my lifetime will that happen so there is my start on jane marshall all dmc just it's beautiful and vibrant and bright and it's just so much fun to stitch on i'm just doing it on simple 28 count mushroom lugana by zweigart and i think it i think it works really well because the colors just are popping right off of it but it it's just so much fun and i have to do this i have to do another 500 stitches for this so i'll probably pull this out in the next day or two and um, work on her 
some more, but it, she's just so much fun. And like I said, as far as I know, she's still available. I'll put the link down below. But she is. It's 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 gorgeous. Um, I've never done a hands across the sea. That's gonna change. <laughs> Quite a few of them are gonna change. And uh, I love how. Even, and this is just a PDF. It's not one of those beautiful books that Nicola makes and designs. But um, it uh, it's gorgeous. It's really. I mean, even the PDF you get. You get the floss list in the PDF, and then you have the color chart, and then you have black and white chart. So you can do it either way, and they're very clear and easy, even on a PDF. Some PDFs don't are not very clear, I've noticed, but it, it I love it. So I can't wait to start my big one. Um, and that segues into haul. So let's, whoops. Papers. It's going to be an um, invitation to my cat to go play in the paper. She's, if you hear funny noises and things, she's in the kitchen, underneath the kitchen table, playing with a straw. I live in a, my apartment is um, an old school. I live in an old school, elementary school. And my kitchen is separated by a half wall and then my living room. So it's almost like one great big room. So when she's playing in the kitchen, I'll definitely, there she goes. Um, she's playing with a straw. So she keeps picking it up and dropping it and picking it up and dropping it. I have a cat that plays fetch. She's strange. Okay. We'll start with this haul first. When Autumn Dream is done, say hello to songbird number two, which is actually songbird number one it's the first one in the series forever and ever it is uh, the northern cardinals and christmas rose i love cardinals cardinals and ravens are my favorite birds besides owls and i was planning on making this my very first start until i got autumn dream for my birthday but um seeing jesse marie do hers and it come out beautiful in the DMC. And um, Sammy J, Sammy J Stitches, she is also stitching this. Um, and she's doing it um, as well. And, and it's just gorgeous. So, yep, this is going to be the next one to start. And if I finish Autumn Dream um, before Mania, this is one of my Mania starts. This is one of the new starts for Mania. Because I want to have one going at all times. So when this one is done, I'll pick another one in the series. There's 12 of them. I want to do all of them. And I'm doing this on, I'm hoping, I don't have anything totally stark white, but I'm hoping that it shows up, is um, 28 Count Springfield Sage Lugana. It's a really pretty grayish sage green color it's not really showing up the lighting here is just so crappy today it's not funny and um there we go that might work a little better but it's just really really pretty and um, i did autumn dream on mushrooms so i i kind of wanted to follow the color of the background in this and i thought this would go really really pretty and then I have the floss. The reason why it's still in the bag and I haven't um, put it on my uh, floss card yet is because I know that once it goes on the floss card, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have any willpower to not start it. So it's gonna stay there until Autumn Dream is done. Or close to mania and then, and then my second part of haul I have a third part of haul but it's on its way from Australia and I was hoping it would be here by the time I did this video it was mailed out on the third so it should be here hopefully sometime next week and then I can start it. 
it's the um, the modern folk embroidery uh, friends and family Quaker it's called the 2020 Sal from them and I saw this late December maybe mid late December come out and I was floored it is big and it's gorgeous and it's a combination of Scottish English and there's another um, one of samplers but it is just simply gorgeous and I cannot wait to start this and I picked out silks from silks for you and the color combination that I picked out excuse me is um, PR 155 and it is chocolate brown and cranberry gonna be gorgeous and I'm stepping out of my comfort zone with that because I've never worked with silk before so yeah go big or go home that's the motto I'm also going with 32 count for the first time on a big piece not a small piece yeah we yeah I'm telling you I'm a lemming virtual stitchers I'm a lemming just Virtual Stitchers made me do it. That is that is the hashtag for 2020. Plain and simple. And I'm doing that, going to be doing that on 32 count platinum. Lugana. A whole big yeah, half a yard. Again. A bap. So this is really, really pretty. It's it's a hair or two um, lighter than the mushroom. Yeah, you can see it. it. I mean, here it kind of looks the same, but it's not if you see it in person. The mushroom is teeny bit darker. This is this is a shade hair to lighter, and it's really, really pretty. And um, I think this would go really, really well with um, the cranberry and chocolate combination. So I'm hoping to get that in the mail next week sometime. Because everybody that has ordered from silks for you says it takes between two and three weeks to get what it, it whether it's your monthly um floss club and um or you orders that you get from them once this coronavirus thing is done because sadly they're not getting their silk to die so they're not they don't have a lot right now so i was lucky that i got the three half hanks that I picked and got them out and ordered when I did because it's going to be um, it's going to be tight. They went on their website and put that there's just they're running out. They don't they don't have their silk to dye from their shipment because it comes from China and things from China are being stopped. So um, you'll their website is just all sold out and there's only a handful of stuff left. And I know the color that I ordered one of the colors that I ordered um, the one I'm doing the modern folk embroidery on is sold out so I think my half Hank was probably one of the last of that color for now and um, that's it for haul oh nope that's not it for haul I lied. Uh, we have a little haul Jessie Marie she showed this at the beginning of the year when she was um, getting ready to start her plans for Anatong Ufendel from Hands Across the Sea. So I had to get from Mad for Minders the Hands Across the Sea um, needle minder. And of course, you can't have anything travel alone. And I mean, anybody that knows me knows 
Baby Yoda is my little fella. It's my Bubba. So, yeah, I had to get Baby Yoda. He's now my fourth, third, third, for now, third. There's a couple, um, Stitch and Button. She's on Floss Tube. She also has a Facebook group. Um, I got a bunch of needle minders from her and two of more Baby Yoda. And she's got a couple more in there. And, um, yeah. So, yeah. We're going to have lots of Baby Yodas. Got to have the Bubba. He's so cute. But there's that one. So that's that's my haul. This is my first Mad for Minders, and they are fabulous. I love the, the wooden... The wooden ones they're light but they're just i love them they're really really pretty and that's it for haul but i was given a little stitchy kindness in the mail from a fellow virtual stitcher thank you betsy i love them and again this is falling into mania but she gave she sent me when she finished her finished doing this, she sent this to me. Long Dog Sampler Game of Swans. This is my second Mania start. It's all going to be DMC. And the colors, I just, when I saw this a couple of years ago, I fell in love with it because of the colors. They're, they're very autumnal. They're very, um, just fall like and I love fall it's my favorite time of year and it's just so pretty and I'm planning on stitching this on 32 count antique white so that's gonna be a mania start and then this one this might be a little difficult to see but as I have to cover up the pattern but again falling into line with um, Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow and how it's got the Dickinson Christmas Carol vibe. Betsy had done these and she sent them to me. They're from a magazine. It's um, Just Cross Stitch Magazine, December 2016, Volume 34, Number 7. And you can buy the magazine because... Um, our lovely Amel on Virtual Stitchers who lives in England. Uh, she saw it and promptly went and bought the magazine so she could do these. I don't, like I said, I don't know how good it's going to be because I have to cover up the pattern, but it's silhouettes of Marley, Scrooge, and Tiny Tim. And like I said, anybody that knows me knows that A Christmas Carol is right up there. It's one of the, one of my favorite, uh, favorite things. And uh, so thank you, Betsy. I'm ex so excited to start Game of Swans. Um, can't wait. Can't wait for Mania now. I wasn't too thrilled about it before, but I can't wait for Mania now. Um, okay, that leads us to plans. And it's just basically what the challenges tell me to stitch. As I said at the beginning of the video, we learned last week that it's, you know, thank God for monthly challenges because we would have been lost if we didn't have things to, that, you know, tell us to stitch. And I didn't get to do this last month because it was still February. But Sammy J has printed out and created a yearly stitch track. It says 2018, but ignore it. And basically every day, it has all the months up here. I'll take it out of the plastic, it might be a little easier. Um, it has all the months and then it has all the days down here. And every day I keep track of my stitch count. And I knew before I started counting stitches that I was making progress on my stuff because you could see it, you could see the progress, but I didn't realize the amount that I was stitching in projects, in um, 
you know, when I get into a groove and I really get going until I started the challenge groups and keeping track of, um, of the stitches and you know, how many you stitched. I kept track of it every day. Some days were a lot lighter than others. There were some days like in January, I only had about 250 stitches a day. Um, there were, there was one day in February where I stitched over a thousand in an, one day. It just fluctuates, bounces back and forth. But my stitch count in January was 17,473 stitches for the month of January. Blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. Because you don't realize you're stitching that much. You don't realize that you're, that's how much you're actually putting stitches in. You see the progress and you see it develop, but you don't, you don't know until you start counting the stitches just exactly how many stitches you're putting into it. And for February, it was 18,307. And like I said, today is only the 12th, so I'll put today's stitches in, um, in the, uh, when I'm done and then I'll put them, add them up at the end of the month. It, it's amazing. I sit back now thinking when I didn't count stitches, it's like, wow, how much did I stitch before without knowing about it? I, I like the idea of, um, uh, getting to, you know, knowing how much you're stitching. It's just a lot of fun and mind-blowing. <laughs> um, my Jesse Marie chose the WIPGO numbers at the end of February for March. And my WIPGO was, I redid my WIPGO board from what it was in January because things have changed. Things are, I'm doing different things. Um, I had more full coverages in my first WIPGO board. I've only, I'm only doing two concentrating on two of my full coverages now the rest of them are put away and they'll come out later but I'm only worrying about two right now um so Jane Marshall was picked for one and then the other one the other block that was picked I think it was 24 I think block 20, 18 and 24 was free choice so I'm either going to I've been working on that with Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow but I think I'm going to bounce back between the Modern Folk Embroidery for the Free Choice and Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow and then concentrate on Jane Marshall for the other one. So that's about it. That's what we've gotten. Um, floss tubes that I've watched um, the last two weeks are the usual ones. Slovak Farm, Coffee Stitcher, Sammy J Stitches, uh, Jesse Murray and uh, Jennifer Upton, Upton Stitches. She's my girl. We laugh a lot when we're on Messenger together. It's hysterical. Um, Isabel Wilson, Hayde Attic with Crafts. Um, she she had a family tragedy last week. Her brother died in a car accident, and. Uh, She's been in our thoughts and our prayers. And uh, we love her dearly on Virtual Stitchers. And uh, I just wanted to say to her, we're here for you. And we love you. Um, Helen D. Helen Daly. Uh, she lives in Maine. She's one of my favorite floss tubers. Jen Lee, Quirks and Stitches. Uh, congratulations on the house. Yay! Can't wait to see pictures of it. Um, and on your setting down roots. And uh, your March Madness. Abby Bella Stitch is, uh, she can talk you into anything, pretty much. Sammy J Stitches. And then last but not least is the wonderful, hysterical, completely talented Ellen Reed of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour, who, if you also don't know, 
is also the female lead singer of the Crash Test Dummies. Yes, my 90s are coming back in full force now. And she's fabulous. She started to do some Stitch With Me videos. She's hysterical. Um, and she's also the co... Um, she's also co-sponsoring the Sal for Jane Marshall. 1857. And I got the hashtag for that. Find it. Found, found it finally. It's called uh, hashtag, ba hashtag babies got out back Sal. Um, and Sarah Shears is also a co-sponsor of that too. So I'll put the hashtag. I'll put all this stuff down below. And um, that's, that's about it. I guess just keep doing my challenges. What the challenges tell me to do is what I'm going to do. Yep, challenges rule my life. It's pretty much, you know, when you don't have them, you feel like really out of sorts. Totally out of sorts. And finally, I just want to give a huge, huge shout out and thank you to everybody that has watched my videos commented on my videos and subscribed to my videos. I am I never expected to have as many subscribers as I have now. I thought I'd barely make a hundred, if that. And every day the number goes up. It just ticks up every day. And I just I really from the bottom of my heart wanted to say thank you to everybody that has commented and subscribed and said how much they enjoy the videos, how much they like what I'm working on. Like I said at the end of my whip parade, it makes me feel like I can really do this. I, I have enough confidence now that people really want to see what I'm working on and that they like it and they want to see more. And you'll see more, <laughs> a lot of more, a lot more. Um, my probably, I would like to do another video maybe two weeks. I think I'm going to shoot for two every two to three weeks. Um, because like I said, I'm not, my rotation right now is not like I'm working on 25 things in a week. Unless the challenges tell me to, then, then they'll come out. But um, yeah, I think every two to three weeks is a good, good time frame to have progress on stuff and it, you'll see a lot of repetition because once I get into a project, it's hard for me to put it down, especially if I'm enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying Christmas at Hawk on Hollow. Just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I can't wait to do more. So with that, great big thank you. Great big, my heart is full. And until next time, Happy stitching, everybody. Bye-bye.